Well, good evening, everyone. Let's see here. I think my guest has, uh, let's see what my my co-host. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Knowledge is Power podcast live. There we go. Hey. Right. My, my system is a little, but I'm Slow. here. Okay, great, great. How are you today? I'm okay. How are yeah, you? I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. Hey, listen, you know, I, I want to let the audience know that uh, um, Tuesday we've got to have a guest, and I haven't made, have really actually confirmed that guest, but so we're going to move on to Thursdays because so next Thursday we're going to have uh, our uh, Thursday, uh, what we have on the first Thursdays of uh, the table talk, Thursday table right. talk. And our subject is going to be the 16th Amendments um, that's, that we are going to be facing in the, in the, uh, the election on uh, May 1st. Uh, and we need to know what those 16 amendments on the election uh, for the city has right. proposed for us. So that's some propositions that we need to discuss and talk about. So our voters to know what to vote on, how to vote, so they can understand those questions. You, do they, you know, a lot of times they get on in a, in a vote voting booth and just just thought hit numbers and, and punching numbers and it's not what it's supposed to be. You need to know what you're voting for besides with the candidates. But tonight we have a special candidate. Tonight is um, um, uh, a gentleman, um, a local gentleman uh, who um, uh, that is running for mayor of Baltimore, Texas. Uh, we'll talk about that on, on in about 30 seconds. But also, Donna, any PSA we need to talk about? Well, you know, this is my last Wednesday, and I am super excited to be hosting a little appreciation, more or less, for Art when I'm not going to say meet and greet because he's been uh, over that war for over 30 years. And so we just kind of want, as a young person that's considering the Get Out the Boat initiative, I just want to let him know that we appreciate him. And, and whether you agree with him or disagree with him. There could be no us without him. He has been a trailblazer. He has uh, paved the way. And I just want to host a little appreciation event because he is my friend. He has helped me in the community. He, uh, his son and myself, we are classmates. And I really appreciate the person that he's been in the community. So we're going to have that on March 24th from 630 to 830. And that's going to be at Nails Sports Bar, 2820 Washington Boulevard. And I am super excited to be closing out this little candidate series initiative, Get Out the Boat effort. Um, I've been working really hard to just kind of make people aware and just improve voter turnout and kind of bring a little bit of excitement back to elections. I want everybody to be vocal, vote local. We need your input. Uh, voting rights matters. Uh, you know, for me, I, I, I'm a firm believer that you only have two powers, voting power and buying power. And, and, and where you spend your money matters and who you elect to represent you matters. So I'm excited about that. Oh, great, great. I've been here uh, in the back, uh, backstage punching some numbers in and all that good stuff. But anyway, we are glad to have everybody to join us every Sundays and Tuesdays and now Thursday for the month of uh, no, uh, March. Um, and uh, so also, I mean, let everyone, everyone know on not only Thursday night, uh, our Thursday table talk, but on Sunday, we're going to have um, City Councilman uh, for War 2, uh, my guests on next on following Sunday. So that'll be an event. So anyway, we're going to bring our super guest. Oh, look who showed up. Francis, hey. Hey. Okay. Okay. Hello. Right. Good evening. I told Good you she'd be on. <laughs> All right. So um, I think, LaDonna, you have some work to do right now. So what is that? Yes, I do. Knowledge is Power Podcast Live is a platform to share important information by educating Southeast Texas, African-American communities with valuable information on health, education, finances, politics, and business. We pride ourselves on having our hands on the pulse of this community and keeping you abreast of what is going on in and around the Golden Triangle. We are super excited about our guest tonight. Tony, tell us where they can find us. Oh, at www.knowledgeispowerpodcast.live. Uh, we all have our new website. And also, Knowledge is Power Podcast Live is now on Facebook, Spotify, YouTube, LinkedIn, 
Twitter and Apple iTunes. How about that? Hey, one more, one other announcement I would like to make is that. Go ahead. The Texas Rent Relief. We're 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 pushing this because this is really big for the renters and their landlords. Together, um, Texas has monies to help. Do not let these monies go to waste. Go to www. TexasRentRelief.com or you can call 1-833-989-7368. Do That's call it. and That's get it. those That's money. And they have help for utilities as well. And Francis, let them know what they can do. Then you can drop us a comment. And we want to hear from you guys tonight. We want to hear from the community what you're thinking throughout the night as we um, talk and explore with our guests. That's right. And again, you can check out our new website at www.knowledgeispowerpodcast.live. That's everywhere. We're all over the place. Now, I tell you what, we're going to bring on our new guest. I mean, this, this evening, uh, he's our local mortician and um, uh, his business is alive, but it's dead. <laughs> but, it's, <laughs> but anyway, we're going to bring on... Alive yeah. and growing. We have yes, a yes. tonight, our mayoral candidate. To Knowledge is Power Podcast Live with your host, Tony Redfro, and my co host, LaDonna Sherwood and Francis Lawkins. Knowledge is Power Podcast Live starts now. I'm still bumping to the beat. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right, everybody. We, we have our special guest tonight, LaShawn Proctor. Let me bring you to the main screen, my brother, because you on, on. There we go. We on in with the LaShawn Proctor, our candidate for mayor of Beaumont, Texas, in the May 1st election of 2021. Shawnee, what's going on? How you doing? How you doing this afternoon? Hello, All ladies. Right, How are y'all listening? Well, well, sir, how are you? How are you? <laughs> All right, Mr. Mayor, what's going on? Tell us, or tell, 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 tell the world about yourself. Well, again, um, as you stated, my name is LaShawn Proctor. I am a candidate in this uh, 2021 mayor election. Um, I'm originally I'm from Beaumont, graduated high school from Westbrook, Westbrook Bruins, class of 1987. I am a uh, military united states navy where i spent 10 years um in the united states navy served in the gulf war i am a bnsf uh employee where i worked for bnsf for 13 years uh was a locomotive engineer as well as uh, uh worked for was a utu uh, union rep that uh that i did that of course as you said earlier i'm a mortician by trade <laughs> my day job um and just here to try to to serve the city of Beaumont. That's that's the, the job that I want to to be able to do as well. What make you so what what made you so interested in that uh position as mayor? Uh you you never you never uh ran for office before and you never had that uh been a councilman before. What what made you so interested in that position? Well, I've been interested in, in running, uh, being in city politics and running for mayor. It's not the first time that I've considered to um, to run for, for city office. Um, I feel like as far as the, the city council and thing, I think I would say that I've been a wardsman, not elected to the position, but I've been a part of city council. I've been a part of city council meetings. I've been a part of planning and zoning operations. I've been a things just as I think all of us in the city if you've ever had an issue with your drainage if you've ever had an issue with something that was going on in the city and you went in and, and um, just made some statements and tried to do some things then you've been a part um, I, I just those are just some things that have been done and, and change you know wanting to be a part of change in the city of Beaumont so I decided that I would I would run for for the mayor position tell us a little about what has prepared you 
Um, and what separates you from other candidates? Well, I think one thing, um, again, being a part of different cities, being a part of um, trying to the opening business in different cities, just seeing what the city municipalities are, how they work, um, going before their city councils, going before their planning and zoning commissions um, have given me experience of how those things work. And then as well as Beaumont, uh, being able to do that. Um, one thing that I think that sets me apart when you say that is my ability to be able to um, just gel with, with, with people. Um, being able to be a people's person, uh, being able, one thing with the funeral business, as, as Mr. Mr. Renfro stated earlier, that's what I do. I think with that, uh, I meet people at one of the lowest points in their lives, as I said before. Uh, what lower point can you have when you've lost a loved one? So at that point, you want someone that you can trust. And I think that's one thing that we as funeral home directors and, and funeral home personnel bring to families at one of their lowest moments. They know that the funeral home that they choose to service their loved one, that they can trust those persons. And that's just one thing that we have established in our business and why our business has grown so fast and why it has grown so much, because people know that they can trust us. Okay, Mr. Proctor, um, what is your greatest attribute that you can contribute to our city council? Um, the greatest attribute that I can think is I can bring is bringing forth as far as gelling everyone together. Um, I think that I can we can meet people where they are. Um, everyone is a person. Everyone has an opinion, and I think it's just respecting everyone's opinion, being able to have everyone to see each other's views, each other's sides. And take each other into consideration as far as, hey, our opinions are our opinions. Doesn't always make us bad people because we have the opinions that we have. And just being able to bring people together. I think that's going to be one of the greatest things that I can do um, for that. And when we see if we all come together on the same page, then, of course, we'll be able to move things forward for our city. Right. I don't want to coerce you here, but it sounds like your running theme is basically reuniting the city of Beaumont. I like it. Well, we, that's the tag we can put on it as well. <laughs> I have a question. Okay. My question is, everyone has at least two or three major things that they want to see accomplished uh, within their time. Um, what would you consider your main attributes or, care, or things that you want to accomplish or things that you want to tackle right off the bat? Or, or have you thought put some thought into that? Well, yeah, I, I think the main thing that I, I would like to to get personnel to see is the value in Beaumont. I, I would like to tackle that first. And I say that because if we can get everyone to see the value from our children to our parents to our businesses, then people will want to come to Beaumont. Because, again, we all know that we don't put anything, any type of effort in anything that we don't value. So growth and those things. But the first thing is. How can we build, rebuild this picture to get personnel to see the value in our city? Okay, okay. that's great. So that's one of the main things that you're... Now, people are having a bunch of issues with roads and infrastructure and drainage and groundwater. And I, I, I don't know. Can you tell us a little bit about how much of that is public or private issues and how much um how how can we go about tackling some of those issues well but one thing that i i would go into and going in office and a lot of those things that you're speaking of i'm not really privy of that information i don't know the department has i haven't had an opportunity to speak and talk to them and see what the problem is and where the problem are but i know one thing with drainage that i can speak on is i'm very familiar with the washington boulevard area because again, that's where our business is located. That's where we have had flooding. That's where we have had drainage issues. That's where we have had those type of things that happen in our area. So those things have directly affected us and our business. So in that area, it's a matter of, of course, we're putting in new construction. We're putting in new developments of homes. They have newer piping and newer things that they're putting in those areas, but yet and still we're not tackling the older areas. Um, and things like that. So I would first say I would like to sit down and talk to those persons that's over those departments and then get some type of idea and education as far as what's been the problem. And then together, hopefully that we can put together some things in place to, to start to correct those problems. Sean, that's five 
uh, opponents um, in the um, MASH race. Am I correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. Yes, right. So, what make you what make you stand out from the other candidates? Um, why no, would why would I, I want? Okay. No. Go Go ahead, ahead, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean. You say, why would you want to no, vote for no. me? Would that have been the question? Yeah, I was going to ask you why. I want to. I want you to tell us what make what makes you stand out from the other candidates. Because I, I want to. I want a good reason to say, hey, I want to vote for you. Well, I, I think the, I think one of the things that make me stand out is again, um, and I go back to to the thing of what I mentioned earlier. I, I when we talk about establishing business and, and growth. I think that I'm the ideal person to show what growth looks like outside with my candidates that's on that's running for for mayor as well. When I look at how to build the relationships with people, again, I go back to what I do for a living. Um, our funeral homes, we started off with one funeral home with in Hardin County um, doing no business at all and getting people to understand that we are here to help. The community. We're here to help the families. We're here to give them someone that they can trust, someone that they can believe in, someone that they can lean on, someone that they know is going to help them, someone that they know is going to have their best interests at hand. And at the end of the day, someone that's going to help them through a situation that may be one of the, the most trying times that they have in their life. Um, and our business continues to grow because people trust again in us. They trust in what we can do. I feel that I can take the business attributes that I have, the business things that I've learned, I can bring them to the city and together with the other person's ideas that the other, other candidates, I mean, other um, ward personnel, uh, the other city councilmen, the other department heads, that I can bring those ideas to the table. They can have the, the ideas that they have. And I think that we can make those things work. I, that's why I think one of the reasons that I think that I'm the best person for this job. Thank you. Uh, I, have, okay. I, w I would like to speak about um, education and youth and making uh, sure that the BISD and the city, which has kind of been a little, a strange relationship, what can we do to kind of uh, bridge that gap between BISD and education and the city of Beaumont? Well, one thing, one thing that I think in that uh, bridging that gap is first partnering with BISD. Beaumont and BISD have to be partners within this part of growth. If we're talking about growing the city, then we have to have a, a thriving school district. Our school district has to be one that's that's appeasing to families that's coming in, that looks good to families that's coming in. For families to know that their children are going to get educated in our school district, to know that their children are going to be taken care of in our school district, and to know that their children are going to become good model citizens when they leave our school district. And I think that's one thing that the city and uh, BISD can come together on and do that. Because again, if we're talking about growth, if we're talking about moving things forward, then we need our school district and we need those persons um, in our school district and in, within our city to believe and in trust in our work in our schools. And that's one thing that, that we know that if we have that, then our city will start to grow there. Mr. Proctor, do you have a um, idea of any strategic planning that you um, have maybe explored as to how to make those things happen? Well, uh, again, uh, I think going back to, I, I've looked at, we have to go into investing. How, how are we going to invest in our kids and show our kids that we're going to invest in them? I, I use this, this scenario a lot. When we look at, I, I use Beaumont uh, School District right now, and I use BU basketball team. They've just won 5A state championship. That's going to put a lot of eyes on the athletic program at BU. Uh, next year, if they tend to go in to, to win again, then that's going to put more eyes. That's going to make children, even athletes, want to go to BIS because we know we all want to be a part of something that's winning. We all want to mm -hmm. be a part of something that's moving forward and that's being progressive. I just look at that say, once we do that, then how can we tie that in in order to be able to keep our children, incentivize them to now maybe look at Lamar 
to look at Lamar and how can we get them to go to Lamar? How can we get them to mm-hmm. invest in Lamar? And once we do that, then what happens when the children go there and our, our, our city university is thriving? Then it brings other families to look at that school. It brings other kids that want to come into that school because, again, they're going to have a winning program. If we can get our kids to look at Lamar and go there, then just think of what type of – and we build a lot of things on athletics, and we know that. Not to take away from academics because we need academics, mm-hmm. and it's going to bring other academics – academical things here for for kids that want to that want to do those things as well whether it's um something looking in a tech world you know because that's where we're going now is technology but we have to be able to open up to be able to bring those children here and if our university is thriving then other people are going to want to come in and as they do that then other businesses are going to want to come in as well and that's the vision that i have to see our city to start to grow okay my i have another question pertaining to um like infrastructure and mm-hmm. improving, like you say, bringing things here that will make businesses want to come here. A bunch of people have talked about planning and zoning and permitting and things of that nature. Uh, how do you feel about uh, working with planning and zoning to kind of abridge some of these processes? Uh, I'm, when I say abridge, I mean shorten, so that it's not such a lengthy, tedious, time-consuming uh, process okay. to make businesses more, uh, you know, apt to come this way. Well, I think, honestly, I think with, with planning and zoning and, and those things, I'm, I just went through that process with planning and zoning um, in order to, to, to try and do something else here within the city. And the process, outside of the paperwork and just putting things on, unless you can move things up on the agenda, um, and there, I, I thought it went fairly, fairly quick, honestly, with that that part of being able to get it on the agenda. Um, it's just the time where the meetings are. So unless we're gonna have that to where they call more meetings or something like that in order to be able to get it on to the planning and zoning uh, portion, um, I think getting the businesses here. Honestly, when we go back to that, it's going to go back to how attractive can we make our city? You know, how can we make it to attractive? And maybe if we can give them some type of incentive, you know, to, to come here, some type of tax break, some type of something to keep businesses here. Because I think that's where, where we're missing the mark is that once businesses come, they're not staying because of the profit margin, I think, you know, because they're not able to make money as fast as they think that they are and the shareholders maybe aren't willing to invest a little bit more into it or invest that time to give it to grow and i think that's why we're losing some of our businesses that's um that's not staying so um regarding you know the race you know there's a lot of different things going on in the world and in our world here in beaumont um as far as covid and uh you know race relations how do you how do you plan on bridging and mending those gaps here in our community well the race relations things that i have i I would love to be able to um work with our police department um i think our police department does a good job but i think that what we need is to have more involvement in our communities we need to have more involvement with the officers interacting with the children we know most of the crime that we're having and race issues and things that we're having are with our younger teens. That's across the country. Um, mm-hmm. the, the being, whether it's being racially profiled, whether it's being, you know, the kids are being pulled over, they're being mishandled, um, however that is. I just think if, if we have a better relationship, um, I think that we can tackle that. And I, I thank God every day that we have not had a lot of problems that we've had across the country here in Beaumont. Uh, But we do know that there is things that need to be fixed in our race relations. It's most definitely need to be a fix. It needs to be addressed. But first, we have to all agree that there's a problem, you know what I'm saying, in order to be able to have good dialogue, in order to be able to fix that problem. Well, well, Mayor Proctor, how do you expect, how are you, I'm expecting you to handle the the city chambers, the the city councilmen and um, that there's so much devices in the in the city council. How are you planning to unite those uh, candidates or those councils together? Because for the previous years, it's been nothing but chaos and uh, um, 
divided uh, issues and uh, personal issues among each other. How can you bridge that? What would you do to bridge that together? On well, these trucks? First, <laughs> yes, sir. And, and me trying mm -hmm. to do that with being, we'd like to have, of course, those gentlemen and ladies have already been sitting at the table, but I think just having a different outlook, having us sit down at the table, allowing everyone to dialogue. And I think once we put the city in the forefront, and be able to put along, put aside the, the personal things that we have amongst each other. If we can look at the city and saying that this is gonna be best for the city, then personally, we will be able to put our personal issues aside. But again, we have to be um, grown men, grown women sitting at the table and understand that we're setting an example for everyone that's, sit that's sitting out that's watching. Because again, it's no different than um, a parent telling a child to do as I say, not as I do. You know, we all know that a child is going to follow and do what the parents say. So we have to do what we say and we have to make sure we practice that and show that to the people of the city. And I think once we're able to do that, we should be able to get things on track. Right. right. I have a twofold question um, before we go to that question, Tony. So we know, um, glad you brought up the chamber and how that's handled. Give uh, the people that may not be aware a little bit of a breakdown on the city manager, council, government structure so that people are aware of what type of government that is and what the requirements are to even get things done. Can you give us a little layman breakdown of that? Yeah, sure. Of course, we are run by the city manager. Our, our government is a city manager government run, as you just said. City manager is the person that he's like the CEO at the end of the day. He he runs, he does the budget, he does all of those things for the city. Your council persons are, you have Ward 1, Ward 2, Ward 3, Ward 4. Those are the persons that actually gets the, the, the funds that do, they allocate the funds, they're able to work in the wards, they're able to do the things that they have for the wards. The city manager, uh, he will go in and he will, the, the city council holds the city manager uh, accountable, in a sense. But the city manager runs the city. In voting, we have to have two things, two personnel, two wardsmen um, to be able to put anything on a ballot. We have to have four in order to make the, the, the vote pass. Um, those are just your basic things as far as our city and how it's run. Uh, and, and that's it. The mayor, a lot of times, what the mayor does, and a lot of times people, uh, the, ba the main two things that the mayor does is to manage the meetings, which is the city council meetings, and the management is a part. The, the mayor is a part of the emergency management team. Um, those are the two main roles that the mayor plays, and and those are the basic things. And of course, we do know that with those jobs, it's not anything that's really paid. It's a stipend that's given to all of the, those persons that's on those particular boards, except for the the city manager and the city attorney. They do have a salary that they are paid. I'm sorry, Tony, go ahead to you. You had a question up there. Oh, okay. I did have, no, I didn't, but yes, I do. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, from the, um, Terry Raw, who's watching or listening with us this, this, this evening, he's asking that you think the city manager is the problem or management within the city? Um, and, and Mr. Raw, I, I can't say directly that or not. I, I don't I have not been in those closed door meetings. I have not been in a meeting with those personnel to make that determination if that's the problem or if not. I guess in a sense with that, I'm like at, at this point, every other citizen, you know, I've had my experiences uh, with the city. I've had my experiences with uh, with going to city council and those things. But I, I don't know if, where the problem falls um, with that or not. I, I can't say that at this point. Okay, well, let me dive a little deep right now. We're going to dive a little deep, deep, deep right now. Uh, 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 LaShawn Proctor, um, right now, that is a damaging article that's going to be released uh, this week or it has been released from the Southeast Texas a Political uh, Review. And um, it um, is stating that you are not living in the city limits and... Um, and that that you do not qualify for running for mayor and a lot of other uh, uh, here that's that's not 
not very good. I mean, and I'd like for you to clear up your name and clear if this up. Uh, are you prepared to explain to us uh, um, the situation about you living outside the city limits that disqualify you for being a mayor candidate? Um, I mean, yes, sir. I, I, I do reside in the city of Beaumont. Um, I, I think the article that you're saying says that I, I have a property. I had property that was in Hardin County, uh, even had a home, a house that was in Hardin County. Um, the house, that house got messed up during Harvey, um, and I, nobody has lived in that house since. Well, that pretty much sums that up. That's pretty clear, cut and dry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> short of providing us with your address, I don't know what else they would want you to do. Um, I have a little question that's a little on the lighter side. Can you tell us a little bit about what you like to do for fun? What do you like to do in Beaumont when you're not working? <laughs> well, um, my, my job is is kind of one of those things that we do work a lot. But in my spare time, I mean, I ride motorcycles uh, side by side. Um, just try to get out and, and just do some things outside, you know, to that, that kind of relieves a little bit of stress. Um, I'm a simple guy, you know, I'm, I'm a simple guy for the most part. Um, doesn't really take a lot. I mean, we just try to get away whenever we can to just do some things that's fun. Okay, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go to the comment board again, John. Um, Candy Jenkins is asking, what do you think about bringing the D.A.R.E. program back to, in school again? Um, I, I think the D.A.R.E. program was, was a wonderful program. Um, to be able to to educate the kids, to be able to help them, you know, through the process, um, I, I think I think it's a great program. And those are some of the things that, again, we have to we have to get with BISD and the city and, and partner. You know, um, one thing you know, the DAP program was run by the city of Beaumont. You know, the police department, city of Beaumont. Now we have BISD police department. So I, I'm not sure if that acronym is really just tied to city police or how is it tied in that part? I'm, I'm not, I don't really know. I haven't done that research on that, but I think that we can put some type of program in there where we can implement, implement that back into, into the system. Okay. Uh, Francis. Yeah. I have a light hearted question as well. What is your, um, the, your, your most favorite thing about Beaumont? Um, my, my most, the favorite thing that I have about Beaumont and that I always loved about Beaumont is that I always felt Beaumont was a great place to raise a family, a great place mm -hmm. to raise kids. Um, I, in spite of the few problems and issues that we have, I, I, I always felt that there's nowhere in Beaumont that you could go that could be unsafe, you know, and that's just mm -hmm. when I was growing up. I mean, we was always throughout all parts of the city riding our boat, our bicycles from the North end to the mall to, from the pay Archie. You know, and it was a great place. I mean, it, it was fun times. And I, I just, even now, I just look at Beaumont being a great place, a great place to raise a family. I have a question. Lately, we've been hearing a lot about uh, things being, uh, money being allocated equally. Well, we know that equal sometimes isn't equitable. So how do you feel about that? Uh, given that some wards may be getting an equal share, but it may not technically be equitable given the situation in other wards or the necessities that other wards may have. Can you give me a little perspective on how you feel about things like that? Well, I, I of course, all wards now are, are given about $7.4 million that all of the wards that kind of, as, as far as the budget is done. Now, as you said, some wards need, some wards may need that, some wards may not need that. So I'm all for, and again, it's all the city council can go back in and, and restructure some things, and and that's just a matter of they do it. I would like to see everything put into a pot, in a sense, for the better, for lack of a better way of saying it. Just put it in a pot, and that way, whatever's needed, whatever's needed first. So I use the scenario: if we have a home, and the roof is leaking on the home, you're not going to go in and fix the sheetrock and change your carpet before you fix your roof. Um, and I just look at that in the city, you have to fix the roof first. And then if not, everything else that you're doing is just a waste. So I look at that as the city. We have areas in the city that we know are that needs attention. I would want to go in and get those areas attended to, attended to first that needs that attention. And then we'll work our way down and address the other areas. That's just what I would love to see that happens in the city. 
So once you are mayor of the city, are you planning to to provide or are you planning to help promote more business to downtown? Uh, did you say to do more business downtown? To prepare for more business, new business for downtown. Are you prepared to open the doors open for other industries to come in? Um, uh, we've, you know, we've always talked about we are our company, we are our community. You know, we we, we have all the large, some of the largest refineries in the area, but we need to be diverse. We need to have uh, more different type of uh, 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 industry for uh, for others. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Most, most definitely. I, I think that um, the only way that our our city is going to grow is if we allow other persons to to come in. I, I mean, mm -hmm. we have a great we have a great uh, community. We have a great sense of people. The oil industry has done a lot for this city, but there are everyone yes. can't go work at mobile. Everyone can't right. go work at Chevron. There are other things and other things that we have to bring to the city for the other persons that's here. Um, and those are just some of the things that I think that that we need to do. We need to find other companies that want to come in. We need to, you know what? We need to go out and court other businesses. How do we get anything in? We have to go out and see what it is that they need. We have to go in out and see what it is that they want. We have to find out what it, what it would take for them to come here. And I right. think once we do that, then we'll be able to see where does this business fit in our city? Does it fit downtown? Maybe it fits in the north end. Maybe this business fits in the south end. Maybe this business fits in the west end. And once we put those businesses where they best fit in our city, then we'll see all parts of our city start to grow. Because everybody mm -hmm. may want to go downtown, but downtown may not be a fit for everybody. That's right. You know, That's they right. may better be suited to be somewhere else. And I think that once we encourage those businesses to come here, if they're not from here, then we, as the, the, the city personnel can say, hey, this is where you would better suit our city. And if we put those companies where we know that they're going to thrive, then our city would be growing and the companies will do well and they'll want to stay here. Hey, I'm going to go back to the comment board again, okay? Uh, Linda Spikes Jones is asking, which is pretty much what we just talked about, I'm sorry, but do you plan for a rehab for older parts of Beaumont? Um, yes, I, I would love to see other parts of Beaumont rehab. Um, again, if, if I, I use me for example, we are we are doing our best to revitalize the side of town where where our business our business is. Not, I, I mean, that's just where I invest. We're investing in in the area where no one else is really investing. You know, I'm I'm happy to see we have new homes coming up in our area now where we did not have them coming up. Those are just things that's going to make people, again, want to be on the side of town. So the older parts of town, I'm all for rehabbing them. I'm all for making them beauty again. Because, again, as we invest in those parts of town that's been neglected, you're going to have more people going to want to come. You're going to have more businesses want to come. But everyone wants to come somewhere where it looks nice. Everyone wants to come somewhere where they feel like they, they can they can be safe, they can do good business, and that their businesses are going to make money. And those are the things that we want to do. So we, I'm all for it. Let's let's jump in and let's make it happen. Let me add this to your platform. We need more developments. We need more residential developments, more uh, cost savings homes. We need to, we need to develop a community, a better community in our city. Don't sure. you agree? Yes. yes. I, I, yes, sir. I agree with you with that. And you know what we know what I and I, I, I'm very happy to see that the city has invested in, in Brandon Jones with the, the dilapidated home that he's going to be doing. Because one thing about the homes, we have to realize everybody can't go and build, build a $200,000 home. Everybody mm -hmm. can't do that. But how do we re revitalize our communities? We go in not just a vacant lot because a vacant lot is just a vacant lot. But if we can take some of these homes that they're wanting to tear down and we can take some of these homes that nobody's living in and allow someone to invest in them that want to invest in them, then we'll have personnel that's going to have affordable housing, which we consider that's making uh, lower or in medium income homes that people can actually afford. And people can actually go in and buy those homes. They can feel good about being a homeowner and they can do things to make those communities thrive again because that's what's going to make, vacant lots is not going to make a community thrive. 
all it's going to do mm -hmm. is make a community value go down and no one wants to see that because then no one cuts the grass. No one does those things or they wait two or three months to cut the grass. And we know in the summertime, two or three months going to cut the grass is not good at all for no one. And I, I'm really excited about uh, what Brandon Johnson is proposing because that rehab and revitalization is going to be the difference between an eyesore and improving what what we're selling, which is the community and what it looks like. But my question, um, I, I get inboxed often by the local uh, Beaumont transportation workers. They are concerned that people are saying something about doing away with public transportation and this and that and the other, and they're concerned. So I just want to bring up their concerns. How do you feel about the public transit system here locally in the city of Beaumont and those workers and their concerns? Well, I'm I'm very I'm very interested in, in their concerns and, and the things that's going. We need local transportation here in the city of Beaumont. Everybody does not have a car. Everybody does not have access to a car and everybody does not want to walk wherever it is that they're going. So the transportation is very intricate part of this city. You have our elderly that needs to get around. You have the ones, our personnel that's our, our, our special needs, our disabled personnel, those personnel that need the, the, the transportation. We need to be able to provide that for them. We need to be able to help them get to the places that they need to go, whether it's doctor's appointments, work, the grocery store, somewhere for fun, somewhere for to meet family and play. We need to be able to do that. And we as a city should be concerned with them to be able to do that. And in that, we should be concerned with those those workers, the bus drivers that's going to take care of our family members, because those are our families that members that's riding that bus. Those are our friends that's riding that bus. Those are our friends that, and our family that's riding that transportation. So we should want someone that we know is going to be safe, that's going to provide them with the transportation, that's going to provide them with a safe ride, that's going to show up to work, and that's going to be there to, to, to support them. That's what we need, and we need to show them that. Okay, Good, ladies, you had another question? If not, I'll go back to the comment board. Yeah, let's see what our um, commentary has to say. Okay, let's get here. Let's we go right here to Dustin Harris. Dustin is asking all these parks we have in Beaumont that are just sitting empty. What has to be happened? What has to happen to allow all these local food truck owners to use them? Hey, Sean, one in one minute, can you answer those? Um, well, of course, I think with the food trucks and things like that in the local parks. That's going to be something that we have to look at in the charter and how it's done. I mean, and just look at how it's going to be able to be done for that. Um, and I think that that's that's something that we will be able to, to sit down and look at the charter and how it's worded because those are things that's probably been put in that charter that that stops mm -hmm. them from being able to do that. And I have read the charter on some of the parks and stuff and how that works. And some of it, you know, we do need to to look at. Okay, uh, and also Terry Roy is asking, what does it? What does you think about business wise that can bring uh, that can be brought into War Three and Four to generate two hundred to three hundred jobs? Well, first, first and fastest is construction. You know, when you look at mm -hmm. two or three hundred jobs that can be brought into right off the bat, it's some type of construction project. That that's where you will be able to get that because anything else that has that has that's tech, everybody's not going to be able to do that. You don't need two or three hundred people to do tech jobs. Um, so I look at something that's going to be uh, some type of construction. So where they're building apartment complexes in the West End, things like that, we have to incentivize and be able to get persons to be interested in putting those type of apartment complexes or homes into Ward 3 and Ward 4. Okay, thank you. One, in one minute, let's go ahead and answer this question for Latanya Young. What are your thoughts on assisting our homeless citizens that are living under the bridge to aid in keeping them safe and cleaning up our city. Um, well, with with the homeless persons that's up under the bridge, I think it's one thing that persons know that I, I've been working with the homeless persons under the bridge for uh, for a while, and and more so since the uh, the ice storm that we had. Um, just trying to help them get things clean, just trying to help them clean themselves up, trying to help them get some some employment um, and do those things. And then even providing them uh, some sanitary things. We I've had some people that have really reached out and helped when we were doing the food, doing clothing, 
doing um, um, Clorox and things like that they needed. There's a lot of people, I, I dare not take the credit for that because people came in and stepped up. It was a lot of people, we made a post, they came up, we stepped up, we're still doing those things. We provided some other items down there. If you go down there and you see the trash is being cleaned up, um, it's being moved. Uh, so those are some things that we've been doing, and I think that they're, that they're doing a great job, and they're just being incentivized to be able to do that for themselves as well. Francis? Oh, well, um, when it comes to um, just your overall outtake, on um, you running for the mayoral election again. Um, what is it that you want to see happen here in Beaumont? One one thing. Growth. If you want to win one word, just growth. I, I want to see Beaumont grow. I want to see Beaumont be better. I want to see Beaumont be a, a thriving city to where everyone that's in Beaumont has everything that they need, um, everything that's that's required to make a city run, and and some fun things, you know, that we can all go out with our families and do. Um, I just want to see Beaumont grow, to have other people come in and see the value in Beaumont that those of us that choose to live here, those of us that still decides to reside here, bring our businesses here, and raise our families here. I want people from the outside to come in Beaumont and see the same thing and want to be a part of this city. Oh, wow. Good answer. Good answer. Yeah, that's a great answer. Yeah, right, right. LaDonna, you have anything? Um, I'm just super excited about everything that you have and the plan that you have, the vision that you have for the city. I just hope that um, as a candidate, sometimes I know it's hard to articulate what you're wanting and what the citizens are wanting. Can you tell me how do you plan to include the public in your processing of what's needed? What are your plans for uh, public engagement? Um, whether it's well, you reaching out to citizens or making the citizens able to reach out to you, what, what is your plan? Well, first, first the thing is, is going to people, meeting them where they are. Um, just going and asking uh, people, what is it that they want? I just want to be the voice. I want to be the voice to have the seat at the table to be able to to bring what the citizens of Beaumont say that they want. Those are the things that I want to fight for. Not fight for what LaShawn wants. It's to fight for what the citizens want. So I want to be accessible. I want to be that person that that they know that they can come to and say, hey, this is what we would like to see. I want to do my darnest to make sure that we do all things to make it go because it's, it's about the citizens. It's about the people. And I think once we as elected officials understand that it's about the people and it's not about us, it's about what people want, it's about what they desire, then at that point, then our city will grow because then everyone would understand that they have a voice. Everyone would understand that someone is listening to me. I just want to be able to listen and be able to come back and have it in and, and then regurgitate it to the people at the city council and those persons there and say this is what the people said this is what the people desire and if we can do what the people want then we'll have a happy city we'll have a happy city council and our city will move forward and and be transparent we have to all be transparent to to our our, our people and our citizens in this city and once we're able to do that we'll see some progress it'll happen and accountability and if it's not happening hold me accountable call me out Bring it to the table, you know, because that's what I want to be able to do. LaShawn Proctor, candidate for mayor, Boma, Texas. I've got one more question, and uh, I'm gonna let you share after that question. I have to. We've got. I want you to go to the comment board once we once the show is over and uh, mm -hmm. uh, answer some of the comments for you that has commented on it because I can't place all the questions on here, but this one here I must post and ask this question of you because this is my heart. This is what I enjoy doing. This is why I have this podcast to help educate our community about everything and everything. Let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a question coming across, but about, again, from Latonya Young. Being that the mayor is responsible for emergency management, what have you done 
uh, post disaster here in Beaumont. And if elected, now that's one question. And if elected, do you plan to stay local and continue to roll up your sleeve to assist? Well, I, I think everyone that that well, everyone that don't know the ones that know me, the ones that don't. Just a little bit about what I've done during every storm, every storm that we've had. We go all the way back to Harvey and things. I, I have some great associates, friends. And, and, and personnel that we just we just boots on the ground. You know, we are we are go getters. And if something happens, we are our neighbor's keeper. You know, we we're going to look out for our neighbors, whether it's going every storm, going check on their homes, going to make sure that things are safe, going out and helping people get uh, to safety, whether it was flooded, whether trees were down, whatever that it was happening. Those are just the things that that we have done. I love doing those things. That's just that's just who, who I am. Getting going and, and rescuing people um, that maybe not able to get out of their homes, whether they're not able to to get out of where they are, just to try to bring them to safety. Because sometimes our our fire department, our EMS, they're doing a great job, but sometimes it's too many people for them just to get to on their own. So we as citizens have to go out and do that. Those are just the things that that we have done. If I'm elected mayor, I often say, I understand that the mayor is in the emergency management thing. They're in the booth. They're doing those things. But I often go back to my military days. You got, I was in the Navy. So we had admirals. We had rear admirals, admirals, captains. I want to be that captain. I understand that the rear admiral got to be in the office, but I want to be that captain that's down there on the ground with the troops. I want to be that admiral or that captain that's down there that's actually reporting back to the admiral to tell the admiral, this is what I see. I don't want to be in the booth. I want to be boots on the ground because I feel like I can be more effective in being boots on the ground and helping with my people. Because I feel like what better leader that's going to be out there leading in the trenches, in the dirt, in the grind with the men and women that are working along with them. I don't want to be doing the pointing. I want to be lead, doing the leading with the ground. So if someone's going to be injured, I want to be that person that's going to be down there has a possibility, just like everyone else, of being injured. I want to be that person that's going to be down there, my life on the line, just like everyone else that's putting their life on the line for everyone else. That's just me. That's just where I want to be. And that's just where I choose to be and have chose to be at every point when we've had a storm or something going on in this city. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell them. And let me toot your horn a little bit further, feeding the homeless. <laughs> giving the elderly people water, making sure that people have what they need and doing it for free. And we're excited about that. <laughs> but but you know what, LaDonna? At that point, I got good friends, people that believe in me, people that trust in me, because every time that we do it, not to take away from nobody that's getting things that's coming in, but we grassroots. Everybody that has ever helped us and done things and we've helped these things was working class people that cared about their community, that went into their personal pockets to get the money and the things that they needed. You know, we didn't sit around and wait. And, I, and again, not taking anything from companies and places that shipping things in. Thank God for them. We appreciate them. But we're talking about people that work every day, that needs that, that provides for their family, that's going in their pockets and taking their resources and putting them out there for us to do what we do. That's the people that has been helping us. That's the people that have been providing. So just as we talk about everybody that's doing it, it's local. It's it's boots on the ground. Those are the people that say, hey, what do you need? When we was helping the homeless, it was people calling on the phone, people on the Facebook page that I've worked with, that I know in the community, that people say, hey, we just want to help. They did in their pockets, and we was doing it. We passed out the water. It wasn't me. I did a part, but everybody else played a great part in that as well, and we did that together. Not LaShawn Proctor. It was people coming together that believed in the cause. And I think that that's what we can do in this city. When you see someone that you know is trying to do good, people will get behind and people will bring what they have to the table. And we get things done. Thank you, LaShawn. Proctor, mayor of candidate of Boma, Texas, May election of 2021. Girls, how was that show? 
It was awesome. Song. Right, right, right. Great. I think it's a terrific show. Good luck in your race. Yes, Thank and you. good Thank luck to us, Sean. And also, please go back to the, the comments and ask your, your fan club, your voters, if those are supporting you. They have questions and, and just nothing but love for you. Uh, and before we go on Knowledge is Power Podcast Live, we are back on Tuesday and Thursday and Sundays. So if, uh, before you go, Sean, we'd like to share anything to your audience. Um, I just want to say, first of all, thank y'all um, for the Knowledge is Power podcast. I mean, Mr. Rumpf, I know I've been on your thing prior, post with, with COVID, yes. you know, and things yes. like that. Yes. One thing that yes. I can, if I can put this on your podcast, please, and if you can let personnel know this, for those person, family that have lost uh, loved ones through COVID, um, you know, in 2020, they can, there's a website, and I like to post it, and, and maybe you do it. FEMA is helping those families with up to $7,000 reimbursement if they have their funeral bill and things like that. It's going to roll out May 1st. May 1st is when it's going to roll out what they're going to be doing. And this is something that's done through FEMA. I posted it on my Facebook page um, and my funeral home Facebook page as far as what they're going to be doing. But it's called COVID-19 funeral assistance COVID 19 funeral assistance it's on fema.gov fema f e m a dot gov is on that website and it's COVID 19 funeral assistance and what they're doing again is they're going back 2020 they have not moved it to 2021 yet for those persons that died but persons that have passed away 2020 from COVID all they'll need is the death certificate that says COVID and be able to fill out those paperwork that they have, and then they're eligible for up to $7,000 reimbursement that they're doing for those families. Um, so I have put it out. I'm going to contact, be trying to contact all of the families that we have serviced um, and, and, and just get that information to them and then try and help them to be able to do that. So if you can do that for me, I would greatly appreciate it. All right, we will do that. i tell you, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quick, I'm quick. I'm real quick. All right, there it is. FEMA.gov, COVID-19 funeral assistance. Uh, those who uh, uh, relatives or friends who have passed away uh, due from COVID-19, having the coronavirus, um, the government is going to pay up to $7,000 of the funeral expenses. Uh, and that starts May 1st, uh, right? Yes. Uh okay. Yes, sir. Let me. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. April. I'm sorry. April. April 1st. April 1st. That's starting April 1st. April 1st. So, sorry. April 1st. Yes, sir. Th those of you who um, ha have a, a, anyone in the family that has died from the COVID uh, 19, um, remember, that's plenty of money here, and they're going to uh, reimburse you up to $7,000 on uh, funeral expenses. At all funeral homes everywhere, okay, and that starts yeah, and, April and, and, the first. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. They pass, and that's if they pass after January twentieth, two thousand twenty. January the twenty started January the twentieth, two thousand twenty. Anyone yes. passed between that time and in the year two thousand twenty. Right. So last year, last January the twentieth, twenty twenty. From there on, to current day today. They're going to pay up to seven thousand dollars. Make sure you got your receipts your, uh, from your funeral expenses. All your funeral expenses up to seven thousand dollars. So if your funeral expenses was eight thousand dollars, they'll pay seven thousand of that eight thousand, and um, that's that's a big that's a big blessing for everybody. Just like yeah, the and, and, uh, and, and, the. Um, it's going to be twenty twenty now. All of twenty twenty. They haven't gotten to twenty one yet. So just all okay. of twenty twenty. Uh, right up to twenty twenty. Okay, great, great, guys. Uh, please. Um, I had another here. Let me post it again because this is very important to everyone. Uh, uh, let's see here. Can I find it again? I'm, I'm on your board. You have so many messages here. Uh, on your local yeah, election yeah, yeah, local, yeah, right. Yeah, your local election uh, elections are just as important as, and if not more important than the national elections. Please encourage everyone to vote. That's come from my good friend Sherry Oldman. And congratulations, Sherry, on your re uh, retirement. <laughs> from the city of Beaumont. Is that I uh, thought I saw that? Okay, great. Oh, and also, retired? no, she's not. She hadn't retired. She can't oh, retire. Okay. 
<laughs> she planned on retiring real soon. So I wanted to say that. And um, 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 let's see. Fran Bowman is ask, telling you accountable must be. I guess you say accountability must be number your he's your number one fan candidate. You're the number one candidate. Uh let's Thank see you. here. Thank you. And you've got so many. So if you got and also you have some personal questions, uh just go back and ask them and let them know you you're a part of it and you want to make it happen. People, we thank everyone for joining us every Sunday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays on Knowledge's Power Podcast Live. Uh, I'm going to ask my co-hosts if they have anything they want to say before we close out. I think that before we close, we should let LaShawn make one final plea to his audience to let them know why they should vote for him, what number he is on the ballot, and whatever he wants to say, this is it. There you go. <laughs> Well, I just, again, thank you guys. But everyone that's out there watching this podcast, I want to thank you for, for watching. Thank you for lending your ear and your eyes to, to Mr. Renfro and his host, his guest ladies hosting at this thing. Thank you guys for that. And I just remember me on the ballot. I'm going to be number two. Number two on the ballot, uh, LaShawn D. Proctor. I, I just want to be the, the mayor of the city of Beaumont. I want to show you what we can do if we all put our minds to it and we all put our efforts to it, that we can make change. So if we're talking about change and we want change, let's vote change. And I think that I'm the best person for you to vote for, for change. And just remember, LaShawn D. Proctor, number two on the ballot. Thank you. <laughs> My people perish for the lack, for the lack of, knowledge. of knowledge. This is why we have knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Yes, sir. Power is knowledge. Yes, sir. Thank you, everyone, for watching this. And if you're there, share your page, share this page, share this podcast, tag your friends. Let everyone know that LaShawn Proctor, number two on the ballot for mayor of Beaumont. Good night, everybody. Thank you for watching Knowledge is Power Podcast Live. Be sure to like and subscribe to all Knowledge is Power social media pages. 